radical encounters. Radical encounters is what serving the Lord is all about. For as He speaks to you, radical things happen. Moses was spoken to in the burning bush. He turned aside. He came a little bit closer to see what is this burning bush? What's making this bush burn like that? And when the Lord saw that He had taken attention, the Lord had drawn Him like that, the Lord spoke to Him. And so, I would like to share as a missionary some radical encounters that I've experienced over the years. And I trust that through these experiences, today's experiences, radical encounters in the bush today, would be there to, to radicalize you as well for the Lord. To step out in faith and trust God and say, Lord, speak to me like you spoke to Moses in the bush. Speak to me like you instructed Moses to take his rod and put it over the water. Speak to me, Lord. Lord, a snake has bitten me. Let me shake it off into the fire as Paul did and continue sharing the gospel, the good news to the people. And even those people would see through that radical encounter, that miraculous encounter, the poison had no take on Paul. So I want to share a few. This series, I call it the series Radical Encounters. I'd like to share some radical encounters with you. David, a brother in Christ of mine, welcome my book. Thank you, John. David will be sharing um, these 10 series with me, a brother in the Lord. And I really appreciate you and the way we can interact and share mm. with one another. I'd like to just read from Scripture, the burning bush. So Moses was keeping flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a, in a flame of fire, out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight, and see why the bush is not burning up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses! And he said, Here I am. Then he said, come, cl come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place in which you are standing is holy ground. And Moses did that, and the story continues. My story, I guess one of my, the, the very first one that really made me realize that God is not just a God out there, or a religion, or a faith that I walk just by reading but through an ex through, through a personal relationship with God and that personal relationship is where God shows himself like he showed himself to Moses showed himself through the miracles uh, of Paul and the apostles later once Jesus had ret uh, returned to his father and uh, my first encounter David was quite a radical one it starts like this it was in the morning time um, we were at a meeting it was, uh, it was called by an organization in Cape Town. They were looking for community leaders. I was part of that. And that, when we came out of that meeting, um, a friend of mine, uh, Oh, John, I've locked my keys in my car. I thought, oh my hat. I've got another meeting that I'm supposed to attend. I'm running a little bit late already. I've got to rush for this other meeting. And uh, I call it just surreal. You know, when something, it's like the whole world goes... Mm. Everything just kind of slows down. It just becomes like, weird. And I, I, I thought, in this, I thought, oh no, I'm the sucker that's going to sit here with a wire trying to get his keys out of the car for the next half an hour. But in that moment, it's like everything started, mm. and I had and the keys of my vehicle in my hand. He had a totally different vehicle. And I, I still made a joke. I said, ah, no, I said, and I, I jumped up, and I made as if I'm going to kick in the window, and, and he, he was going, no, and I said, man, if God wants me to open this door, we'll open the door, and I made as if I'm kicking, he said, no, I stuck in the keys, I turned the keys and the, and the, and the door and unlocked from a different vehicle, the key, door unlocked, I opened the door, everybody's looking at me, it's like sort of shock, and in, in, still in that surreal kind of environment, I, I I wasn't flippant, but it was like sort of casual. It was like, yeah, I showed you the Lord once I've not got into my car and I was driving away. And I had my interpreter, 
with me. He speaks 11 languages. He's from Angola. And he's looking at me like this. His name is Emmy. And Emmy is looking at me like this. And I was still on this high. It's like you're walking on eggs. It's like, man, wow. That was, wow. I'm still trying to, like, sort of fathom this. And Amy's looking at me, and I'm still, this, still in this mode, and I'm saying, ah, Amy, you know, that's how the Lord works. And, you know, it was like kind of natural, like, this happens. And I, and, and I dropped Amy off, and I was now on my way to this meeting. And the meeting was out in, in the sticks, about a couple of kilometers out of Cape Town, out on the West Coast Road, towards the game reserve there. And now I'm driving up the road, and I'm still amped. Wow, Lord, yes. I mean, you know what it's like. Whoa. I mean, I was so amped you could weld with me. You know, so hot. <laughs> you can, oh, my, what the, this was so tremendous. And I'm driving up the road and for this meeting. But I'm passing the game park. And as I pass the game park, there's a massive uh, earlant. Uh, for, for the Americans, uh, you could equate it to maybe a stag, but one of these massive big stags. The eelant is a massive creature, weighs a couple of tons in its full grown. And this thing was full grown. It had horns. It was, I mean, the horns were from the ground, maybe that high. Beautiful. And it was like this. I was still in this mode, and it was like this. And the Lord was saying, I felt the Lord say, Mark, hey. and he showed me scripture. says, in, in the Garden of Eden, I gave you dominion over the animals. You, my child, speak to that animal. Stop and speak to that animal. Tell that animal to come. Now, of course... My faith, I cannot, I don't even have the faith of a mustard seed because I cannot say to this mountain, move into the sea that goes into the sea. So now I'm thinking, now doubt comes in my mind. Am I hearing God? Am I too empty? Is it my own voice? What is this? But anyway, I feel obliged to kind of stop my vehicle. So I stop my vehicle. I jump out of, the, out of my vehicle. There's a game fence, a massive game fence. And I see this earlunt, earlunt on the other side. And I... I get out and I first look, nobody's around. I mean, I'm out in the bush, but it just shows you, you know, how, how weak my faith is. Because I'm even in the bush, I'm looking, nobody's going to hear me now. I'm going to make a fool of myself, you know. And um, so I, uh, I look around, nobody's there, and I shout to this Yelad. Hey, Yelad, you beautiful creature. God has given me dominion over you. Come here. Now this Yelad's eating of the leaves in the tree. And this Elon turns and it looks at me. And I'm thinking, wow. By now, game, wild, it should have skitterish, it should have run. This buck turns around and it looks at me. And I'm thinking, wow, that's awesome. Wow, praise the Lord. And it's like, it's like, what do you mean praise the Lord? I told you to call that animal. I've given you charge over it. Back in the Garden of Eden, you my child. Come now, call it. So I shouted again. Yelad, you beautiful creature, come here. God has given me dominion over you. And to my surprise, this buck starts walking in my direction. Saw it. I must now hunt. I'm a, you know, I used to hunt game. Getting old now, I'd rather hunt with a camera. But in the early days, I'd go hunting. And uh, I see this buck walking. It's coming towards me. I'm standing over there. Hmm. What's happening? Well, this is awesome. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And the back walks at about 10 meters, 10 yards from me. It kind of walks past me like that. And I'm saying, oh, that was fantastic. You know, the animal listened to me. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. I felt the Lord. I said, no, 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 no. Call it. And I called this animal. I said, come here. And this animal came to the fence. And that's phenomenal. I'm going to put my Bible in there down. This animal, this massive buck, came to the fence. And as it came to the fence, it knelt down. Put its front legs like this, and it knelt down. And it lay in front of me like it. It stuck its horns through the game fence. Stuck its horns through the game fence. Now, this is a powerful animal, this. I've seen photographs and films, documentaries, where this size buck has already where a lion is coming in for it, where it's dropped its horns, the lion has run right into its horns, and there the two are lying. The, the, the lion is too heavy, 
So it drops to the back and the back can't get up to pull the horns out and the two die there. I've seen photographs like that and, and, and documentaries on this. And so he has a powerful creature. Now I'm standing a, a bit away from the fence because I think even if the thing had to rip, it could rip the fence. So I'm holding it, I'm holding it now by the horns. And I'm pushing it gently like this. I'm going, oh, you beautiful creature, you beautiful creature. And you know, as I'm pushing, it's slowly pushing back. So I push, it pushes. I push. We have this little game, little game going between this wild animal and myself. Phenomenal. So now I lean down a little bit still weary, you know, away from that horn. And I'm patting it here like you do a horse. Beautiful creature, beautiful creature. And I stand back and I say, you can go now. And this buck pulls those horns out of the fence. It didn't get entangled and all flabbergasted of that. It pulled its horns out. It got up, turned and went back to grazing. I'm telling you something, but <laughs> I was so amped. Now, you know, this morning I'm on the, wow. So I reckon eight, about 80 kilometers back, I've got to go and fetch my wife and my kids. I've got to show them this. Man, I'm driving back. And I get home and I say to my wife, share with you. This is going to the bucks up the road. I'm sure it's still there. And I get my kids and I get into the vehicle and I drive back. And the buck, it's still there. So I'm out of the car. I'm shouting at this buck exactly what I did when Jesus instructed me to do this. And the buck eat. And the buck eat. My wife's looking at me in the car and it's like my kids are looking at me in the car and they must have thought, hey, you know... <laughs> My dad or my husband, he's gone a bit over the top here. Yeah. And the thing didn't listen to me. So I get back into the car and, you know, it's like, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why is it? I was so amped and I wanted my family to, to see this thing. And the answer wasn't there directly. I continued to pray, continue with, with, with my life in the days that followed there. But there came a, a day, maybe a week or two weeks later. We're in again questioning the Lord about this matter. The Lord said to me, He said, I and you are developing a relationship. You, my child, you need to hear my voice. I speak differently to David. I speak differently to Sam and to Jane and to Sally. I speak differently to you. I want you to hear my voice. At that stage, I was early in the mission. It was early in my mission walk, uh, uh, leaving full-time employment, uh, uh, um, uh, secular employment, and now in the field as a missionary. And many things happened after that that reiterated that. More radical encounters that resulted in great things happening around, which I will share with you over the next 10 little episodes. I would like to close in this, and here's the, 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 the underlining. Do not be presumptuous. When the Lord speaks to you, He's speaking to you. He's not necessarily speaking to others because He will be speaking to them in His own way. He's speaking to you. You need to obey. Moses, I want you, you've got my attention now. You're in the, we're talking as from the burning bush. I want you now to go and set my people free. And so it was with his buck. It was the first major steps to the mission walk that I would walk for the next 21 years, 22 years of where I sit now. What an incredible encounter on that day. How oh, did that impact your further walk with the Lord? You know, David, um, one now have, having gone 20 years down the road and one looks back, I can see there and then subsequent um, challenges that I had to face in the field. How through that incident, incident and then subsequent incidents, how my faith was now in a real God. Not that I ever doubted He wasn't real, but it was almost my, my, my religion or my walk with the Lord was one, it was like the church. Okay, I go to church on a Sunday, I uh, go to Bible study on a Wednesday, I'm a cell group leader. I'm involved in the community, in the church, in the community, mm. as in the works there. 
But now the Lord had said, you've got to step out. I want you in the field. I want you to go to the remote people. I want you to go where nobody else wants to go. You see, it's, it's relatively easy to be a missionary in a, village, in a village where there's some infrastructure or in a city. It is another thing to go to war-torn areas and speak to the persecuted there. It's another thing to go into a least reached or unreached areas and speak to the people there and share the gospel there. And the only way, in my life anyway, God who is, was molding me and is still molding me, the only way he knew that John would go into the field like this was through that radical encounter. And I think if I equate that with Moses, mm -hmm. the only way Moses, hello Moses, some radical thing, because later Moses says, okay, it, I, I believe you, I've seen the burning bush here, I'm, I'm going to go. But what do I say to the people because they're going to doubt me? And that's where he said, you're going to tell them, I am sent you. So the confidence that was now in Moses wasn't a religious confidence based on reading only. It was a confidence knowing he had this radical encounter with God. And these radical encounters, because you continue to see radical encounters, the plagues that came and, and, and the solution that was brought. And then the Red Sea, the rod, and um, the cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night that led these people for so many years. The rod that strikes the rock that water comes out of. These are all radical things. Elijah, uh, Elisha, the one sees death, the other doesn't. The one sits and a raven brings him some meat and a little well comes up out of the ground where it's a desert. These are radical things. And, I mean, so that's how I equate it because in my walk then after that, I have been beaten. I have been, uh, my uh, missionary permits have been taken away. I've been accused of being a spy. Um, I've been lied about. And now the scriptures that speak about these things that says they will lie about you, they'll tell lies about you, your own brothers will stab you in the back. I can now joyfully walk that, not because I've only read it and said, well, I'm going to follow it because I read it, but because I've had this real encounter with God and the real encounters that I will continue to share in the next episode and in the next episode, radical encounters. Let us pray. Father, we want to just thank you for this opportunity where David and I could sit down and just share of your greatness, of your personal relationship with us. That you are taking us and personally molding and making us into that instrument that brings you glory. Our prayer this morning, Lord, is that each and every one of your children will hear you, will respond to you, in that miraculous way that only you can put together so that, Lord, the captives might be set free, the brokenhearted can be healed. Lord, those, in, those that are naked can be clothed. And those that are in prison, both spiritual and, and Lord, practical, can be set free. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen.